Yo, what's going on, everybody? Ultimate DJs here from the Teaching Trick YouTube and the Talking Trick Podcast. Here today with a quick and dirty, we hope, <laughs> on the Voyager mechanic and the loop and all the hostels, the kill A to get B to refine to C to D to E to F and all the points in between. We're going to try to jam through those very, very quickly. Let's hop into the game. First of all, I would like to say that if you are going to try to get this ship free to play, then what you're going to do is you're going to hit Herogen hunters, all right? Those are the same Herogen hunters that were in the Delta Quadrant space that you guys got to play with last month with the introduction. You can get them up here. You can get them down here. But these uh, Herogen hunters that fall into the old systems, they actually pay a relatively small number of Herogen relics. That is the currency that you're going to need are those relics to go in and do the first refinery. If you take a look, here's a Herogen hunter. And right there are the Herogen relics that the hunters will drop. You'll notice here that that's a relatively small number, but we do have Herogen Elites that are going to drop more, and those are in some of the new systems that just got introduced this month. As a matter of fact, you will see Hunter Elites in a handful of these systems. As far as a list of systems, that's a little bit tougher to do, but I can tell you right here is the list. So if you go on stfc.space and just search Hunter Elite, you're going to see these 10 different hostels. And these hostels will actually be dropping a greater number of the relics if you're able to kill these. Now, they do hit a little bit harder, but when you kill these, they are going to drop larger numbers of the relics so that you can pick those up. They aren't cell-gated, they aren't warp-locked or anything like that, so you can just go and kill these Herogen Hunters at your convenience, and then you're going to come down here into the Voyager Refinery where you have this Herogen Loot Exchange. This is a 24-hour cooldown, and because of how important the deuterium is, I'm right now going to recommend that you guys do triple refinery. Finds, all right, this is infinitely grindable. You can grind more, you can grind extra. I am going to tell you right now, I would recommend you guys do the triple refine. So, we're going to do that. That gives us 1500 deuterium. What is the deuterium? The deuterium is what allows us to then find the next step of this, and that is to go find bio ships. Now, the bio ships actually show up in a couple of different systems. I'm going to show you this screenshot right here from stfc.space. If you go into hostels and just just search bio ship, you're going to see several. Now, I do want to point out that these bottom three, I have no idea why they aren't separated by name, but these bottom three we're going to ignore for a moment. Okay, we're just going to ignore these for a moment, and we're looking at these 10 starting at 35 and going up to 60. These are the uh, species 8472 bio ships that are dropping biotoxins. Okay, they're dropping biotoxins. So the biotoxins are a another currency that we're going to need. So here's what I'm going to do actually very quickly. I'm going to pop, um, let's see, where, where are my ships? Oh, my ships are not even home or anything like that. Okay. So we're going to do a quick cut here. I'm going to come back and I'm actually going to show you how to actually do a Voyager bio ship uh, scan. All right, hang on one second. Now, from our list earlier, I have found that the hostel that I want to hit is actually in this system. What am I going to use for crew? Well, without the Voyager, there is going to be a different crew once we actually start using Voyager, but I do believe here at the very early tiers, uh, if you have a G4, probably rare or higher, you're probably going to want to use that ship. However, we are seeing very promising data at uh, even tier one and tier two for G3 players that uh, Voyager is actually be being quite effective. However, what we need to do with this hostile is we got to kill it really, really fast. So I'm going damage output. I'm going to use my pylum. I'm using five for the mitigation. Also, loot is very, very important here. So I've got a loot gain officer here in five of 11. I'm also going to pierce it uh, with Kang. I'm going to go for hull breach for the extra crits uh, here with Lorca. I've got Hugh under deck for those uh, for 100% crits if I can get it. I've even got Mariner uh, down here. Beckett Mariner for extra damage. And again, the Doctor for loot gain and Odo for extra crit damage. Uh, so that is what I'm doing. I'm trying to maximize my damage output, which is what Voyager would be doing. Voyager has its own bonuses of thousands of percent, so we know that damage is the key here. So I'm going to go ahead and hop up into the system very quickly and show you what we would do next with those deuterium canisters that we just refined. The deuterium is used for two different things. You can use it to uh, find a player's base using the... Um, 
deep scan ability. That's this one right here. If you guys can see over my shoulder, clicking on that, that's the astrometric scan. If I clicked on a player, it would tell me where that player's base is. Uh, as a matter of fact, we will do that right here. All right. We can see right here what it looks like. And if I click on that and I click this button right here, it's going to generate this screen right here. Clicking this button would actually take me to this player station. Now, this is not a battle log. It is not saved. So you are going to only get one click on this. You click that, you click go, and it is going to take me to the system. Now, if this were an open system, I would be able to go in and actually see the system if it was a fog of war system, or in this case, territory. It just tells me the system that it is, and then I can fly there and look for that player. But again, uh, it is only a one time. If I go back into the battle log it is not here i cannot find it again all right so that's it it's a one and done now if i'm going to use it in the pve piece of this loop all right if i'm going to use it in the pve piece of this loop notice the icon is gone even if i scan the ship again then i'm going to come up here and i'm going to actually do this one which is advanced sensors i can only do it one time so watch very carefully i'm going to zoom out here i'm going to have oh i need to get my combat ship up here um what you're going to see are these hostiles, which are battleships. They're moving relatively slow. These are the Herogen Hunter Elites that we were just talking about for the relics. But watch what happens when I illuminate this system. All right, I'm going to do this, and all of a sudden, a hostile pops in. There it is right there. That is a Species 8472 bio ship, and it contains the biotoxins that I need. So I'm going to kill it. Now, you'll see there's only a little bit here, but I'm going massive, massive loot so that I can actually pick up more and take that home. Why are the biotoxins important? Well, first of all, I can only kill three of these things a day. I'm only getting 1,500 deuterium, and golly, I just spent 750 on this particular player. If I wanted to do it again, I could not for today. I'm actually done for today. But you can see with my loot gain, I got about 1,704. Why is that important? I'm going to come back into the refinery, come down to the Voyager tab, and I would use this one, Species 8472 Loot Exchange, which does cost exotic biotoxins. And I'm going to come down here, and again, if if I can, I'm going to try to take the maximum refine that I can. The most important piece out of this chest are the Delta Quadrant Warp Cells. This is where you're going to go back to another system to try to get some other goo, all right? Do be aware that this chest has a three-day cooldown. It is 72 hours, so that's why I say you might want to work on it over the couple of days and try to get as much loot as you can so that you can get the maximum three cells. If you buy one cell, that's all you're getting for three days. Now. Once we do that, we are going to come to a new series of systems, and I've got those on the screen right here. These are the FCEP systems, or the Fluidic Space Entry Points. Now, there are several of them in the game, but there are four of them that are very important. For whatever reason, only three of them are on this screen. That is FCEP 505. 3819, 247, and for whatever reason, it's not showing up in stfc.space, but that would be FCEP001, which is the level 60 system. What are in these systems? And if you don't remember those, just take a look at stfc.space, do FCEP, and it's the ones that are currently showing parse deal, which is obviously not correct. It's not parse deal, but that's where we are going for the special loot. Inside those systems, you will see a bunch of uh, the uh, bio ships, the eight, species eight four seven two bio ships. Inside those uh, those systems, the bio ships are actually holding. Uh, three different types of currency. Those three currencies are common anomaly samples, rare anomaly samples, and then a small helping of extra exotic biotoxins. Now, there are also in these systems um, the mining nodes, the anomaly, the common anomaly, and the rare anomaly. Here at the very beginning of the loop, I'm going to recommend that you do not go in with a miner just because you need so much. And yes, Voyager can mine this stuff very, very quickly, but the cargo space on Voyager is very, very small. It's going to take a little bit of uh, progression and a little bit of research before I think we're mining with Voyager. But even as compared to taking another regular miner, mining these anomalies are very, very slow. You will actually here at the front end of the loop do a lot better by going in and grinding these hostels because the hostels themselves are going to give you all three of these currencies. You're going to then mass them up. Again, loot is very important. Cargo space, very important. And by the way, I might remind you, you absolutely want to kill these things before round 
uh, eight. All right. Why is that? Because they have what we have deter- uh, determined to call the go home cannon. Here, the first thing at round eight is one big shot from weapon number one. And take a look at that. It is 10 billion in damage. You will die. Okay. Plain and simple. You will die if you make it to round eight. So you got to end this battle in seven rounds or sooner. I tried to do a little bit with Tal yesterday. I don't think that's the best crew, um, but it was enough for us to kind of get started. As I said, we've kind of landed on this five Lorca Kang with a lot of focus on damage. We're going to go in there. We're going to grind those hostiles, then come back to the refinery where we will then exchange the anomaly sample. That's this common anomaly sample where we will get direct shards for isolytic damage and we'll get some extra research particles and ship parts. And then also as we get enough, you'll see I didn't have enough to do this one, the rare chest, which will give more uh, isolytic artifact shards and more ship parts and so forth, as well as the commerce insignias. The commerce insignias then can be used in any of these chests down here, although for the time being, I'm going to absolutely recommend that you hold those things because these chests are just not really worth it. Hopefully later on down the road, they get to be a little bit more worth it. They will change as we tear up the ship, but right here early, not worth it. I would certainly recommend that you hang on to those. The common anomaly sample exchange right here has a five day cooldown five days and the rare sample chest has a seven day cooldown so you definitely want to try to do as much as you can with these things when you can try to work your cooldowns and make sure you have the inventory available but this is the gate and this is why I don't believe that the grind will eventually be quite so bad because we're pretty much doing these like once a week you can grind the herogen as much as you want and you should refine that daily this is a three-day cooldown for those cells. You're going to use those cells to go in and acquire these uh, anomaly samples to come in and get the direct shards. The direct shards are going to improve your isolytic damage, uh, research, efficiencies, this and that. And we'll talk more about isolytic damage in a later video. This right now is how Voyager works. This is the quick and dirty on the Voyager mechanical loop. Questions, comments, I'll try to answer them down below. Leave them down there. Subscribe to the video while you're here. Please share it with your team. Maybe give us a little like if this video helped clarify a little bit for you. Nice, simple, and quick. And hopefully, this will provide you some insight on how you use Voyager and moving forward. Again, I do remind you, Voyager will probably be pretty effective for the G3 and very low G4 players. And that gives me hope as we tear this thing up. It is going to become very, very viable for higher ops level players, even becoming required eventually when you take a look at some of these warp ranges, 285 and 345. Well, Voyager can get you there where a lot of your other ships won't. For those of you low ops level players that are looking to start out in this loop, Velixis is where you can start out with the smallest Herogen Hunter Elite. And it also happens to be the same system where you can earn the biotoxins from the Voyager system scan. This is your main go-to system, and this is the starting system. Uh, you can move up from there, but this is where everything will start right here in Velixis. My name is Ultimate DJs. Oh, you guys didn't see that, man. I put it on the screen. I put it on the screen right here. Velixis. This is, this is, that's it right there. That's that's the one. All right, that's it. My name is Ultimate DJs, your friendly neighborhood cat person saying meow for now for the Talking Trek podcast and the Teaching Trek YouTube saying uh, have a good one. We'll catch you on the next one, everybody. Meow. Bye. Bye.